Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to WCMP's broadcast of this evening's game between the Hankley Knights and the Bell Plain Tigers. I'm Ethan Game Day Gilman. I'll be bringing you all the action from this evening's game again at the Hankley Invitational here at beautiful Brennan Field in Hankley, Minnesota. We have already played our first game of the night here at Brennan Field in this Hankley Invitational. Again, eight teams at this Invitational tournament this weekend, stretching from this evening to Saturday, or excuse me, Sunday evening, and that's when the championship game will be played here in Hankley, Minnesota. The first game featured Elko, the Elko Express, and the Buffalo Bulldogs. And in that game, the Elko Express got the victory over Buffalo 10 to one. So Elko moves on to the winner's bracket and they will play on Saturday tomorrow at 5.30. Buffalo moves and they will play tomorrow at three. They're in the elimination bracket now. And the Elko will play the winner of Centennial and Lions Pub, and Buffalo will play the loser from that game. In our game, it's the Hinkley Knights and the Buff or excuse me, the Bell Plain Tigers. The winner of this game will move on and play the winner of the game between Spring Hill and Maple Plain. The winner of this game will play tomorrow night at 8 p.m. The loser of this game will have to wait until Sunday morning to play. That game will be played at 10.30 on Sunday morning. And the Hinkley Knights taking on the Bell Plain Tigers this evening. We also have something special going on. It will be a Hall of Fame induction here before the game gets going. The Knights will be, excuse me, inducting longtime player and coach Tom Miller to the Hinkley Knights Hall of Fame. We'll get you uh, that Hall of Fame induction here in just a little bit. We're waiting for both teams to get done with some infield warm-ups. The Knights have already finished up and we're waiting on the Tigers here. We'll get that induction to you when it happens. Of course, that'll be happening in a little bit. That'll be during the, actually I should say after the coaches meeting there at the plate and the lineups are announced. So again, Tom Miller, longtime player and coach here for the Knights. He'll be inducted tonight. He's been a player and coach after joining the team 35 years ago. He was also a teacher here in Hankley. So that induction coming up in just a little bit. Of course, then the game will be starting after that between the Hankley Knights and the Bell Plain Tigers. First game featured Elko Express and Buffalo Bulldogs, and Elko got the victory in that game 10 to 1. So it looks like we're getting set to get our coaches meeting here at the plate. And while they do that, let's take a time to take a hear a word from our fine sponsors because without them, we wouldn't be able to come out here and bring you this action from any of these games. So again, want to give them a special shout out here tonight. Daggett's Fresh Foods in Hinkley providing you with the highest quality food for your family. This week at Daggett's, get fresh blackberries or blueberries, two pints for $5. Assorted bone-in pork chop family packs are $2.29 per pound. Boneless top sirloin steaks are $7.99 per pound. And five-pound bags of best choice russet potatoes are two for $5. Deals are good this week only while supplies last. So hurry into your local grocery store, Daggett's Fresh Foods in Hinkley. Minnesota, it's home. Hot summers at the lake, beautiful falls, snowy winters, and rainy springs. We experience it all. Make sure you're ready to handle whatever this state throws at you with help from Minnesota Equipment in Isani. Minnesota Equipment carries brands you love, like John Deere, Steel, Toro, Gravely Zero Turn Mowers, and Aaron Snowblowers. Their helpful staff can not only get you the equipment you need, but can help you maintain it so it will last. Plus, they carry a full line of farm equipment. Minnesota Equipment in Isani, online at minnesotaequipment.com. Back here in Hinkley, getting set for this game between the Bell Plain Tigers and Hinkley Knights. We just got our starting lineups here and about to get that Hall of Fame induction for Mr. Tom Miller. Starting lineups for the Hinkley Knights will be Trevor Johnson at catcher. He'll be batting first. Sean Osmus at first base will be batting second. Out in center field will be TJ Johnson. He'll be batting third. Batting fourth will be pitcher Corey Schmidt batting 
fifth will be Dylan Libra, the left fielder. Sixth, Brady Johnson, the right fielder. Seven, Dazla Texier, third. Jacob Prody will play shortstop at eighth, and Cade Thurner will play second base. And we're getting our Hall of Fame induction right now, so I'll, I'll pause here on my comments and we'll take this moment in. Of course, the Hall of Fame induction for Tom Miller. students of our guest of honor. It's forming a, a nice path for him to come in tonight. And they'll be joined with Josh Tom and Owen Flint. Baseball has been played in the Hinkley area for more than a hundred years and this year, we established the Heatley Knights Hall of Fame to honor those who've given so much to the game and to our community. We began by inducting J.M. Brennan, J.D. Brennan, James Brennan, and Dennis Brennan earlier this spring. And last week, we added longtime players Blaine Miller and Joe Jarvis. Tonight, we add another name to the hall. Our honoree is Tom Miller, longtime Knights player and coach. Tom graduated from Belle Plaine High School in 1979, and we're so happy to be playing Belle Plaine tonight with many friends and family in attendance. He joined the high school team as a freshman, and they won their first ever conference championship his senior year. Went on to play for the Belle Plaine Tigers town team from 1979 to 1985, where his brother and his father, the longtime high school coach and athletic director, played as well. Tom played junior college, both football and baseball. Was a shortstop and a pitcher for Wilmer and a center fielder for Winona State while getting his teaching degree. He came to Hinkley in November of 1985 to teach physical education at the elementary school. Started to play with the Tigers in the spring of 86, but the commute turned out to be a long one, so he switched teams, and he joined the Knights, who went on to the state tournament that summer. Tom played in 469 games for Hinkley, 530 hits, including 15 home runs. He walked about 200 times, stole 150 bases, and he finishes with a career batting average of 334. He coached many teams here in Hinkley, including football for 20 years, wrestling for 10, baseball for more than 20 years, including the junior high and junior varsity squads. He's been a Knights coach and the team's go-to expert on weight training and conditioning. He developed hundreds of young players in the Hinkley area, coaching little league teams for more than 30 years. He took a few years away from the Knights to raise his family, but while sitting up here in the press box announcing games, with his son running the scoreboard, Matt convinced him to get back on the field, and he did, remaining on our active roster to this day. Along with his time as a player and coach, Tom has also spent thousands of hours as a volunteer groundskeeper here at Brennan Field, watering, dragging, breaking, edging the baselines, and just making sure that our field remains one of the nicest in the state. When you take a look around this ballpark tonight, Tom is a big reason it looks this good. He has a love for the game, and he's done his best to pass that along to the many students who played here, encouraging them to take part with energy, team spirit, and good sportsmanship. He retired from teaching just a few weeks ago. He and his wife have moved to Duluth to be closer to family, and he's retiring from the Knights this year as well. We have been so lucky to have him as a teammate, a coach, and a friend who approaches every part of his life with good humor, humility, and kindness. For his dedication and service to baseball and the community, please join us in thanking Tom Miller as we induct him into the Hinkley Knights Hall of Fame. was Tom Miller being inducted into the Knights Hall of Fame. And taught here and coached here in Hinkley for many, many years. He has just retired from teaching a couple of weeks ago and being inducted into the Knights Hall of Fame. And he'll be retiring from the Knights actually this year as well. So Tom Miller again inducted into the Hinkley Knights Hall of Fame.
Oakley Knights Hall of Fame was just put together this year. They've inducted quite a few people since they brought that on. Of course, if you weren't able to hear or joining us a little late, Tom Miller being inducted into the Knights Hall of Fame. He is actually from Bell Plain originally. He played for the Bell Plain Tigers and then while he was living in Hankley, he decided to play for the Knights as the drive to Bell Plain got a little bit too long, so started to play for the Knights, and he's been here ever since. So again, it's Tom Miller, after 35 years with the Knights, is being inducted into the Knights Hall of Fame and will be retiring from the Knights after this season. So congratulations there to Mr. Tom Miller on his Hall of Fame induction into the Knights Hall of Fame. We're just about set to get going here in this game between the Hinkley Knights and the Bell Plain Tigers. You can hear the music starting to go as the Knights are out in the outfield getting warmed up and the Tigers getting their bats going. We're set for a good one here at the Hinkley Invitational here in Hinkley, Minnesota in Br beautiful Brennan Field this evening. First game here at the Hinkley Invitational this evening was Elko and Buffalo taking each other on. The Express from Elko got the victory in that game 10 to one. Elko will move on to the winner's bracket and will play tomorrow at 5.30 p.m. And Buffalo will move to the elimination bracket and they'll play tomorrow at 3 p.m. Elko will face the winner of the game between Centennial and Lions Pub. That'll be the first game tomorrow and that will start at 10 a.m. So again, five games tomorrow and then four games on Sunday with the championship on Sunday as well. So again, if you're not here or you're maybe passing by the Hankley exit or you're going through Hankley, make sure to stop on by. It's a awesome atmosphere, a beautiful field. It'll be beautiful weather. What could be better than some summertime baseball, especially up here in beautiful Hankley, Minnesota. Weather's cooperating for now, but Sunday looks like it might bring some rain. Hopefully it'll hold off though so they can uh, get those games in and played and we won't have to worry about pushing them back or canceling them at all. But before we get started here, let's take a quick commercial break and when we come back, it's time for the start of baseball. I lied, we're gonna stick here, we're gonna wait. They're ready to go, they're ready to go right now. So we'll take a commercial break after the End of the top of the first half inning here. Josh Terrio will lead off for the Bull the Tigers, excuse me. Again, he is pitching tonight for the Tigers, and he will lead off. Starting on the mound tonight for the Knights will be Corey Schmidt. Schmidt with the windup and the pitch. His first one is in there for strike number one. First pitch coming at 8.34. Second one is just outside for ball one. Sitting at about 75 degrees in Hankley, Minnesota. That pitch is going to be just a tad high for ball two. Schmidt gets set, here's the windup and the two one pitch on the way. That one's in there for strike number two. Corey Schmidt on the season is, has a record of three and one. 31 innings pitched. He's faced 148 batters and he has an ERA of 6.10. That ball is hit to the shortstop throw, not gonna be in time. And Terrio showing his wheels out there as he gets on with a leadoff base hit. And now up to the plate will be Colton Kirkow. Runner on, nobody out for the Tigers. Schmidt gets set, here's the pitch. Just paints that outside edge of the plate for strike number one. Schmidt checks the runner at first, then gets set, and here's the pitch. That one's in there for strike number two. So Kirkow with an 0-2 count now. Runner on first, nobody out for the 
Tigers of Belle Plaine. Schmidt will check the runner at first, and oh, that's a close play there at first. Throw almost got there in time, but it bounced just once in the dirt to Osmus's glove. And if it didn't, I'm sure that that would have been an out. That one's popped up towards the center field. Center fielder has to take only a couple steps to his right to get under that one for out number one. Oh, one on and one out. And now it's Brady Curtis, and Curtis with two S's. He's playing shortstop tonight for the Tigers. He gets set. Schmidt looks over at the runner at first. Here's the pitch. First pitch swinging is Curtis, and that one's popped up to the second baseman. He's entered in time for out number two. Cade Thurner is the second baseman tonight for the, the Hankley Knights. Knights wearing their green caps with yellow lettering and yellow stripes. Yellow jersey with the green stripe over the sleeves and the front of the chest outlined in white with Knights lettered in white. Green numbers outlined in white as well. Here's the pitch to John Schmidt. And a wild pass ball will get by the catcher and Terry will be safe at second. Gonna get a time call and Trevor Johnson will meet with Schmidt. Oh, an 0-1, or excuse me, a 1-0 count to John Schmidt. Two down, runner on second. Here's the pitch from Schmidt, just outside. Schmidt pitching to Schmidt. Corey Schmidt on the mound, and John Schmidt at the plate. The 2-0 pitch is in there for strike number one. Two one count now for John Schmidt. Two down and a runner on second for the Tigers. Corey Schmidt, that one is a little bit low for ball three. A three one count here for John Schmidt. Got a runner in scoring position with two down. Here's the windup and the pitch. That one is up in the air and shortstop will get to it in time for out number three. The shortstop had to run a long ways to go and get that one, but Perotti showing off the wheels there on that catch as he grabs it for out number three. Left fielder looked like he was trying to get to it. Third baseman couldn't really get to it either, so he ran all the way from his shortstop spot to go and make that catch for out number three. <laughs> Good catch there by Perotti. So one hit, no runs off of that hit though, and the runner is stranded on second. And when we come back, we'll be set for the Knights' turn at the plate. You're listening to baseball on 106.5 FM AM 1350 and streaming live with video on WCMPRadio.com. Are you interested in a technical degree that can quickly help you land your dream career? Or maybe you've always dreamed of going to a four-year college, but you'd like to start close to home. Either way, Pine Technical and Community College has you covered. PTCC offers more than 50 degrees in hot fields like healthcare information technology, advanced manufacturing, and business. PTCC is now accepting applications. Financial aid may be available. Online at pine.edu. Starting out or starting over, find your future at Pine Technical and Community College. If you've been injured in an auto accident or have sustained other personal injury, you don't have to leave town to get good representation. Spear and Swanson Attorneys at Law in Pine City are experienced and will work on your case with no fee until they get you money. They also handle divorce and custody cases, criminal defense, including DWI and other legal matters. Spear and Swanson is your local law firm that cares about you. So if you need legal representation or advice, call 320-629-7586. Spear and Swanson, Attorneys at Law in Pine City. Bottom of the first inning, no score. As the Knights getting sent for their turn at the plate. On the mound tonight for the Belle Plaine Tigers is Josh Terrio. He got the lone hit in that top of the first inning there for Belle Plaine. 
And of course, leading off for the Hinkley Knights will be Trevor Johnson at that catcher spot. Bell Plain Tigers not off to the greatest start that they would have hoped for. They're three and ten on the season. Meanwhile, the Knights are 12 and six on the season so far. They've been hot as of late and look to continue that here this evening. Trevor Johnson steps into the batter's box and he is set. Terrio goes back to the mound. Here's the windup and the pitch. It's gonna be low for ball one. First pitch is ball one to Johnson, and here's the 1-0 pitch. In there for strike number one. One one count here for Trevor Johnson. Throw back to the pitcher, gets away from him, and now it's gonna go over his head, the throw from the second baseman. A little bit too tall for the pitcher, so we finally get it back to him. He get back, he gets back to the mound. And we're set for the 1-1 pitch. On the way, low for ball two. Two and one for Trevor Johnson. Top of the order leadoff batter for the Knights. Terrio, this one is swung on and hit by Johnson. Straight to the shortstop. He can't field it cleanly, and Johnson's going to be safe at first. So the shortstop cannot field it cleanly. That is Brady Curtis with two S's. And that's going to be counted as an error. But he reaches first safely. And Sean Osmus, the first baseman, the team captain in his 21st year with the Knights. He's at the plate. Nobody out and runner on first. Here's the pitch. Swung on and hit right back towards the pitcher. It gets over his head and Johnson will move up to second and Osmus will be safe at first with a base hit. Griffin Steele will come in to courtesy run for Trevor Johnson. So again, it's Griffin Steele now on second for Trevor Johnson. And TJ Johnson at the plate now, playing center field this evening for the Knights. Two on, nobody out. Swung on and hit towards the third baseman. It's going to be a tough play over to first. He does get the throw to first in time for out number one, but the runners advance to second and third now in scoring position with one out. Corey Schmidt, the pitcher now at the plate. He's got runners in scoring position with only one out. Third baseman made a nice play on that ball. Couldn't get anybody else but the play at first, and he makes that play. Schmidt will swing on this one. This should at least be a sack fly. If it doesn't get over the center fielder's head, it will not, but that will be a sack fly, and Griffin Steele, the courtesy runner, will come in to score the first run of the game, and that'll give the Knights a one to nothing lead. So Schmidt, the sack fly. And it's Dylan Libra at the plate. He hit a home run in the game on Wednesday for their first score of the game. Two down and a runner on second. He'll watch this one go by for strike number one. Runner on second is Sean Osmus. Griffin Steele came in to score on the sack fly from Corey Schmidt. Terrio gets set. Here's the pitch. In there for strike two. So Libero watches two go by. Two straight strikes and down 0-2. Two down and a runner on. Terrio waiting for a signal he likes. He gets it. 
Get set, and here's the 0-2 pitch. Liver swings on one down the third baseline. If it stays fair, that's going to score Osmus. It does stay fair. Osmus will score, and Liver thought about going to two, but he'll have to turn around and go back to first. Either way, he will swing Osmus home, and the Knights now lead two to nothing over the Tigers. An RBI sing single there for Dylan Libra. Your right fielder, Brady Johnson, now at the plate for the Knights. Two down, runner on first for Johnson. Here's the pitch. Johnson swings on the first pitch and follows this one off. For one count for Brady Johnson. Terrio gets set. Here's the pitch. Johnson swings and misses on that one. 0 2 count. Brady Johnson with an 0 2 count in a similar spot that Libra was just in. Down 0 2, and then he got a nice swing. Here's the 0 2 pitch. He swings and fouls this one off off the first baseline. He'll stay alive, and we'll do it again at 0 2 for Brady Johnson. Knights up. Two to nothing over the Bell Plain Tigers. Two runs coming off of two hits. Johnson looking to be the third hit. Swings and gets this one popped up towards the third baseman. The shortstop calls the third baseman off, and he's got it for out number three. So that is out number three, but not before the Knights score two runs off of two hits. One error there by the Tigers. And we'll move on to the second inning here in Hankley. Again with the Knights leading two to nothing. Beaver Meadow Garden Center has the freshest selection of plants, flowers, trees, and more for your yard and garden. Check out a huge selection of garden and yard decorations or pick up garden mulch, decorative stone, topsoil, compost, and more. The experienced staff will answer all of your questions and send you home with the right plans, tools, and supplies to go from ground to gorgeous. Like Beaver Meadow Garden Center on Facebook for updates and more great garden ideas. There's always something growing at Beaver Meadow Garden Center, located just south of Hinkley, right off I-35. Getting the kids to practice on time. Remembering if it's your day to bring snacks. Making it to the game with a clean jersey. Why are simple things sometimes so complicated? Thankfully, with auto owners, insurance doesn't have to be one of them. Auto owners works with independent agents who answer when you call. So you can worry about more important things, like whether your kid is going to run toward first or third base. That's simple human sense. Visit Town & Country Insurance today at townandcountry-ins.com or stop in our offices in Finlayson, Hankley, and Mora. In true Minnesota fashion, we've already had some hot, humid weather, and summer has just begun. Aquarius Home Services wants you to be worry-free with your AC. It's the perfect time to take advantage of their $49 AC tune-up. And if you're planning to replace your worn-out air conditioner, Aquarius has great options to fit most any home and budget. With Aquarius, you'll get amazing professional service and no surprise upfront pricing. They're just a click away at AquariusHomeServices.com. Aquarius, earning the right to be recommended. Ben Groff will lead off in the top of the second inning for the Bell Plain Tigers. He watches the first pitch go by for strike number one and now swings and misses on this one and his count moves to 0-2. Schmidt looking for his first strikeout of the game. 0-2 count, Schmidt gets set. Here's the windup and the pitch. That one swung on and hit to the shortstop and line drive out for out number one. Almost sounded like the bat may have broke there. But that's still intact, and that's out number one. Now at the plate, number 22, the catcher for the Tigers, Garrett Boblet. Schmidt with the windup in the pitch. In there for strike number one. Again out here at the Hinkley Tournament at Brennan Field. He pitched for Schmidt just outside for ball one. An eight-team tournament stretching across three days, beginning with tonight's games. Hankley in the second game of the evening as this one has popped up. 
towards Osmus at first, and he grabs it for out number two. So two up, two down for the Tigers. And now it's Cade Morrison, number four, playing center field today, or rather this evening for the Tigers. He steps in the box. Schmidt with the windup in the pitch. First pitch swinging is Morrison. He taps it behind the plate foul. Schmidt gets back to the mound. He gets set, likes the signal. He's ready and raring to go. Here's the pitch. In there for strike number two. So an 0-2 count now for Morrison. And Schmidt already gets the signal he likes. He's ready to go, looking for out number three, but that one's just going to be outside for ball number one. Schmidt trying to make quick work of this inning. Trying to get out and get his team back to the plate. Here's the one-two pitch. Swung on and hit, and shortstop makes a nice play. Throw on to first, gonna be a tough one. And the runner is safe at first. So an infield hit there for Cade Morrison. Nice play by the shortstop to backhand, grab that one with his glove, and then make the throw on to first. A tough throw, but Morrison is safe. And Lucas O'Brien, the second baseman for the Tigers, is at the plate with two out and a runner on. Schmidt gets set. Here's the pitch. In there for strike one. 0-1 count now to O'Brien. Schmidt gets set. Here's the 0-1 pitch. Just outside for ball one. Count now for O'Brien is one and one. Runner at first with two down. Schmidt with the pitch to O'Brien. Swings on this one and it is, oh, just hooks foul off the first baseline. That one almost came down in fair play. That would have been an extra base hit possibly for O'Brien. Definitely would have had Morrison stretching for three. So one, two count now for O'Brien. Two down, runner on first. Schmidt, he gets set. Here's the pitch. Swung on and missed, and O'Brien was well behind that one. And that'll be the first strikeout of the night for Schmidt. So one hit, and they strand the runner on. No scores off of that one hit for the Tigers. And we'll move to the bottom of the second, and it'll be the Knights' turn again. And they'll look to extend this lead here in Hankley at beautiful Brennan Field. This is a story we all share, of a place rooted in tradition and rich with opportunity, a people driven by compassion and vision. At Essentia Health, we're proud to play our role in this story because we know that this place, these people, are like nowhere else. Visit Essentia Health in Hinkley Sandstone or our new location in Moose Lake for all your care needs. Schedule an appointment at EssentiaHealth.org today. Daggett's Fresh Foods in Hinkley providing you with the highest quality food for your family. This week at Daggett's, get fresh blackberries or blueberries, two pints for $5. Assorted bone-in pork chop family packs are $2.29 per pound. Boneless top sirloin steaks are $7.99 per pound. And five pound bags of best choice russet potatoes are two for $5. Deals are good this week only while supplies last. So hurry into your local grocery store, Daggett's Fresh Foods in Hinkley. Minnesota, it's home. Hot summers at the lake, beautiful falls, snowy winters, and rainy springs. We experience it all. Make sure you're ready to handle whatever this state throws at you with help from Minnesota Equipment in Isani. Minnesota Equipment carries brands you love, like John Deere, Steel, Toro, Gravely Zero Turn Mowers, and Aaron Snowblowers. Their helpful staff can not only get you the equipment you need, but can help you maintain it so it will last. Plus, they carry a full line of farm equipment. Minnesota Equipment in Isani, online at minnesotaequipment.com. Bottom of the second inning. 
Knights will be at the plate, and it will be Des Letexier. We're at number 14. Well, this is a young man who could probably get an infield base hit. He's got some speed to him. Terrio with the first pitch. It's going to be low for ball one. Bell playing wearing the all white unis with the red numbers. And this one is swung up and hit right to the shortstop for out number one. And that'll bring up Jacob Perotti, the shortstop. We're in number 31. So again, all white unis, four bell plane. Red numbers, I believe it's outlined in blue. Red hat with the blue bill. Here's the pitch from Terrio. That swung on and hit right to the shortstop again. And that'll be out number two. So Perotti flies out to the shortstop. And now two down. As we move to Cade Thurner, the second baseman, number six. Two down quickly here for the Knights. And Thurner at the plate. Terrio with the pitch. Thurner will watch that one go by for strike number one. Here's the 0-1 pitch from Terrio. Oh, and that's going to hit Thurner. But... I think they're going to say it did hit his bat. So from what I'm gathering, it sounds like it hit the bat and then maybe his arm and went foul. Or vice versa. Arm, then bat, then foul. So I'm not sure either way. It's an 0-2 count for Thurner. Terrio with the windup and the pitch. That's high for ball one. Terrio gets set. Here's the one two pitch to Thurner. That one's going to be in there for strike number three. And Thurner will go down looking. So Terrio tries to make quick work of this inning as he does. And Terrio just get, getting a nice explanation from the ump there. And very friendly, no animosity about it, just trying to get an explanation. You like to see that, just no animosity and just trying to get that explanation there as the manager will do that as well. No one too upset. So that it brings up the Tigers turn at the plate as the Knights get no hits and no runs. No errors for the Tigers, and we move to the top of the third inning here at beautiful Brennan Field. Are you interested in a technical degree that can quickly help you land your dream career? Or maybe you've always dreamed of going to a four-year college, but you'd like to start close to home. Either way, Pine Technical and Community College has you covered. PTCC offers more than 50 degrees in hot fields like healthcare information technology, advanced manufacturing, and business. PTCC is now accepting applications. Financial aid may be available. Online at pine.edu. Starting out or starting over, find your future at Pine Technical and Community College. Top of the third inning. Knights lead over the Bell Plain Tigers. Two to nothing. After getting those two runs there in the first inning. It's a beautiful night for baseball once again in Hankley, Minnesota. Sitting at around 73 degrees according to the weather app on my phone. A pretty clear night for the most part. Got a couple of clouds hanging out there in the evening sky. As the sun's starting to set. About 9 o'clock exactly. And we'll get set for the Tigers' turn at the plate. Leading off of them will be Zach Dalkey. We're in number 30 playing right field. And he'll bat left. Schmidt with one strikeout on the night gets back to the mound. He gets set. Here's the windup and the pitch. That one's just a bit high outside for ball one. At 
Pitch is ball two. 2-0 two count now for Zach Dulkey. Here's the 2-0 pitch. That one swung on and fouled straight back into the net for strike one. Two and one is the count. Two one pitch from Schmidt is, ooh, gonna paint that outside corner for strike two. That evens the count at two and two. I thought that might be just too far outside, but he manages to just nick the strike zone and then he gets a strike out there on Dulkey as he goes down swinging for out number one. So two strikeouts for Schmidt now on the night and we'll move back to the top of the order here for the Tigers. Josh Terrio, the pitcher. He'll step into the batter's box. Schmidt gets set, here's the windup and the pitch. Terrio gets on top of this one but it will be hit foul off the third baseline. Oh, one the count. Schmidt with the 0 1 pitch. Low for ball one. 1 1 count for Terrio. Schmidt with the windup in the pitch. Ooh, Terrio checks the swing. He does hold off as that is ball two. Schmidt with the 2 1 pitch. That one's going to be just a bit low for ball three. 3 1 count for Josh Terrio. Pitcher versus pitcher here. Schmidt gets set. Here's the windup and the pitch. Oh, that one just stays inside and hits part of the plate to run the count full now for Terrio. Schmidt with the 3 2 pitch. Oh, and that's well inside, and that'll be ball four. Terrio will walk. So run around first with one down, and it's Colton Colton Kirkow. Kirkow wearing number one. Schmidt gets set. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss from Kirkow. And 0-1 now the count. Kirkow awaits the signal from the third base coach. Back into the box. Schmidt. It's set. Here's the 0-1 pitch. Swing and a miss. Schmidt took something off of that one. And Kirkow now down 0-2. Oh Wanna thank everyone for joining us this evening on 106.5 FM AM 1350. As this ball outside for ball one from Schmidt. Count is one and two for Kirkow. And if you're not listening on the radio, you can watch this game live with video on WCMPRadio.com. Just go to the Sports tab, hover over Broadcast Schedule, and then click on the game that says Hinkley versus Bell Plain. Schmidt will throw to the runner on first, but he gets back safely, and we'll do it again. Here's the 1-2 pitch. Kirkow gets a hold of it right to the second baseman. They're going to have a play on first, and that'll be about it. But they do get the out, so two outs now. Runner on second, and it's Brady Curtis with two S's at the plate. And yes, every time I say his name, I'll probably say it's Curtis with two S's. Just for my enjoyment. First pitch to Curtis, though, is in there for strike one. Curtis wearing number 27. Schmidt gets a signal he likes. Here's the pitch. In there for strike two. 0-2 oh, two, count now for Curtis. Two down and a runner on second in scoring position. Schmidt gets set. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Outside for ball one. Schmidt will step off of the plate for just a second. Get back to it. Schmidt gets a signal he likes. Here's the 1-2 pitch. 
And Curtis will get a hold of that one. It's into foul territory. Osmus trying to get under it. He does for out number three. So no hits, no runs, and the Tigers will strand a runner as we move to the bottom of the third inning with the Knights leading over the Tigers two to nothing. You're listening to baseball on WCMP. If you've been injured in an auto accident or have sustained other personal injury, you don't have to leave town to get good representation. Spear and Swanson Attorneys at Law in Pine City are experienced and will work on your case with no fee until they get you money. They also handle divorce and custody cases, criminal defense including DWI and other legal matters. Spear and Swanson is your local law firm that cares about you. So if you need legal representation or advice, call 320-629-7586. Spear and Swanson, Attorneys at Law in Pine City. Wellia Health is the leading provider of healthcare in East Central Minnesota, offering services to Mora, Pine City, Hinkley, and the surrounding communities. We have the always welcoming care you've come to expect close to home. With cutting edge technology and multitude of specialty services, so you can receive the medical care you need when you need it. Live life well with Wellia Health. WelliaHealth.org. Bottom of the third inning, getting set to go. Terrio getting his last couple of warm-up throws in. Again, at the Hankley Invitational this evening, the first game between the Elko Express and the Buffalo Bulldogs. And that game went to the Elko Express 10-1. So Elko in the winner's bracket, they'll play tomorrow at 5.30. The Buffalo Bulldogs will play tomorrow at 3 in the elimination bracket. In our game, it's the Belle Plaine Tigers and the Hinkley Knights. The winner of this game will play tomorrow night at 8 p.m. again. The winner will have to wait until Sunday morning at 10.30. So want to make sure you win this game and get yourself back into a primetime slot. Leading off for the Knights is Trevor Johnson. And he'll watch the first pitch go by for strike number one here in the bottom of the third. Johnson reached on an error in his first at bat, but then was eventually able to reach the plate. And now this one is hit on to shortstop. That's going to be a tough throw, but the throw is in there for out number one. Good throw by the shortstop of the Bulldogs. That again is Curtis. Nice throw on to first for the first out. And now it's Sean Osmus, the 21-year vet and the captain of this night's team. Terrio with the windup and the pitch. Just outside for ball one. one all the count to Osmus. Here's the windup and the pitch. Osmus swings and gets a piece of that one, but it will go back to the backstop, and it'll make the count one and one. One and one the count for Osmus. Terrio gets set, here's the windup and the pitch. Osmus will get a hold of this one, it's down to left field, does it get down in time? No, nice play there. By the left fielder, or did he? Did he hold on to it? No, he did not hold on to it. Or did he? Yes. So he did hold on to it. So we weren't sure if he held on to it or not out there in left field, but a nice diving catch made by the left fielder over there, John Schmidt, for out number two, and that'll bring up T.J. Johnson. He swings and hits the first pitch. It's going to be foul. Popped up there for just a moment, but nobody able to get to it towards the Knights' dugout. 0-1 will be the count to Johnson. Johnson on the season, sporting a 434 batting average with one home run and 13 RBIs. And this pitch will go by. A little bit low for ball one. One and one the count for T.J. Johnson. Terrio gets set. Here's the windup in the pitch. He gets a hold of that one, and it is just past the shortstop, and he'll be on with a base hit. 
DJ Johnson with a two out base hit. And he'll be on as Corey Schmidt will step up to the plate. And Corey Schmidt leads the team with three home runs. He has a 373 batting average and 23 RBIs. That leads the team as well. Here's the windup in the pitch to Schmidt. That's going to be in there for strike one. Schmidt originally from Annandale. Oh, one count to Schmidt. Here's the pitch. Schmidt gets a hold of this one out to left field. Left fielder camps under it, and he grabs it for out number three. So one hit there for the Knights. No runs off that hit. No errors by the Bulldogs, or excuse me, the Tigers. The Bulldogs were the team before. The Bell Plain Tigers, no errors in that inning. And we'll move to the top of the fourth inning in Hankley. And it'll be, again, the Bell Plain Tigers turn to be at the plate. When we come back, you're listening to baseball on WCMP. Beaver Meadow Garden Center has the freshest selection of plants, flowers, trees, and more for your yard and garden. Check out a huge selection of garden and yard decorations or pick up garden mulch, decorative stone, topsoil, compost, and more. The experienced staff will answer all of your questions and send you home with the right plans, tools, and supplies to go from ground to gorgeous. Like Beaver Meadow Garden Center on Facebook for updates and more great garden ideas. There's always something growing at Beaver Meadow Garden Center, located just south of Hinkley, right off I-35. Getting set for the top of the fourth inning. Knights still hold a two to nothing lead over the Bell Plain Tigers. And again, all the games here at this Hinkley Invitational Tournament will be seven innings instead of the regular nine. So they'll be seven innings long. Again, that last game between Elko and Buffalo. Went to Elko. In their tournament just a couple of weeks ago, the Brennan Field Classic. That took place, I believe, the first weekend in June. Of, so this month, Hankley took the championship in that one over Regal, 9-7. to seven. They beat Rodgers in the first game and St. Paul in the second game to get there. Leading off for the Bell Plain Tigers is John Schmidt who just made two outs in that la in the top bottom of the third. Made a nice diving catch with, for the second out there. First pitch to him is in there for strike one. Again, Schmidt doing a nice job of just painting that outside edge of the plate. That is strike one. Here's the 0-1 pitch. That one's going to be low and a tad inside for ball one. Schmidt has done a good job tonight of painting the outside edges of the plate, whether it's the right or left side. He's got good placement on that pitch, and that one's in there for strike number two. So John Schmidt now down in the count one, two. Here's the one, two pitch from Schmidt. Swung on and popped up to the third baseman. He's under it for out number one. Schmidt goes down on a pop-up to the third baseman, Des Texier. And now at the plate, Ben Groff. He lined out to the shortstop in his first at-bat. Schmidt gets set. Here's the windup and the pitch. It's going to be low for ball one, and Johnson can't find it. He actually kicks the ball with his cleat as he's looking for it. It'll roll back. Nobody at the on the bases, so not gonna hurt anything. One down and nobody on. A 1-0 count for Ben Groff. Schmidt gets set, here's the windup and the pitch. That one's in there for strike one. A 1-1 count now for Groff. Schmidt with the 1-1 pitch. That one's swung on and that's gonna be Right to the center fielder. He takes one, maybe even a half a step forward and grabs it for out number two. That's what you like as an outfielder, not having to move at all when 
you go to get the ball. T.J. Johnson with the catch. Again, maybe took a half a step to get that ball. It was hit right towards him. Garrett Boblett at the plate now. He flew out to first base in his first at-bat. First pitch to him is ball. 1-0 count. Two down, nobody on. Here's the 1-0 pitch, and it's in there for strike number one to Boblett. Boblett wearing that 22 number. And Schmidt with the 1-1 pitch. It's going to be outside, just off the plate. And the count will move to 2-1. Two and one. Schmidt takes a second. Gets set. Here's the windup and the pitch. That's going to bounce past the catcher's glove, and that'll make it three balls and one strike for Garrett Boblett. Schmidt takes a second. Going to get some dirt on his hands. Get the sweat off of him. He gets set, and here's the 3-1 pitch. In there for strike number two, and the count is full for Boblet. Schmidt with the windup and the 3-2 pitch. Swung on and missed. And Boblet will go down swinging. That'll be strikeout number three for Schmidt in this game. Three up, three down go the Tigers, and a strikeout by Boblet will end the top of the fourth. Going to the bottom of the fourth now, and again, it will be the Knights' turn as they try to add some insurance runs onto their lead. They lead two to nothing over the Belle Plaine Tigers. Getting the kids to practice on time. Remembering if it's your day to bring snacks. Making it to the game with a clean jersey. Why are simple things sometimes so complicated? Thankfully, with auto owners, insurance doesn't have to be one of them. Auto Owners works with independent agents who answer when you call, so you can worry about more important things, like whether your kid is going to run toward first or third base. That's simple human sense. Visit Town & Country Insurance today at townandcountry-ins.com or stop in our offices in Finlayson, Hinkley, and Mora. In true Minnesota fashion, we've already had some hot, humid weather, and summer has just begun. Aquarius Home Services wants you to be worry-free with your AC. It's the perfect time to take advantage of their $49 AC tune-up. And if you're planning to replace your worn-out air conditioner, Aquarius has great options to fit most any home and budget. With Aquarius, you'll get amazing professional service and no surprise upfront pricing. They're just a click away at AquariusHomeServices.com. Aquarius, earning the right to be recommended. Bottom of the fourth inning. Just about set to get going. Wayne on the catcher again. He's got to get his gear on. And he gets back out there. Terrio on the mound for the Tigers. He's allowed two runs off of three hits. Been a pretty good performance here from both of these pitchers so far tonight after that first inning by the Knights. It looked like... We were in for a little bit of a blowout. The Knights kind of really got things going quickly in the first inning. But since then, the Tigers, Terrio, and their defense have held them off the bases so far. And they're looking to do much of the same here as the windup in the pitch to Dylan Libra is in there and up high for ball number one. So Libra again leading off for the Knights. And here's the 1-0 pitch from Terrio. Ooh, and that's inside, and Libra just spins out of the way of that one. And Cal moves to 2-0. And Dylan Libra hit a leadoff home run on Wednesday night in their game against the Chisago Lakes Bulldogs. That got their first point on the board. And that would eventually help them get a 11-5 victory. He swing. And I think got just a piece of that one, and it's a 2 and one count now, and here's the wind-up in the pitch from Terrio. Took something off that one, but Libra was waiting for it, and he's a little upset with himself as he, that was the pitch he wanted, and just off a little bit, he knew he wanted that one. He waited for it. He knew it was coming. Now is an even count at 2-2. Two and two. Terrio gets set. Here's the wind-up and the pitch to Libra outside, and that'll make it a full count for Dylan Libra. Libra, he's ready. Terrio gets set, and here's the windup and the full count. 
Oh, and that one's in there for strike number three. So he'll go down looking. And that's the first strikeout tonight for Terrio. And now Brady Johnson at the plate. The left-handed pitcher committed to Hamlin University. And again was named the Great River Conference MVP. Looks at ball one. Here's the 1-0 pitch, and that's going to be outside for ball two. During the regular season for the Jaguars, Johnson, I was at a game where he launched a home run towards right center. As he swings and misses on this one, he's counted two and one. So he's got some power to his, his swing. He can really get it off his bat, and here's the 2-1 pitch. Johnson will watch that one go low for ball three. Brady Johnson now sits with a 3-1 count. Terrio with the windup and the pitch. Johnson will hit this one right to the second baseman, throw on to first in time for out number two. Two down and nobody on for the Hinkley Knights, and it's Des Letexier. At the plate, he flew out to shortstop in his first at-bat. He would like to change that here. Get something going for the Knights. Here's the windup in the pitch from Terrio, and Latexier gets a piece of that one. Hits the net. Oh, one count. Here's the windup and the pitch from Terrio. It's going to bounce and be low for ball one. One one count now for Des Letexier. Got to watch Letexier play some basketball during the winter sports season. A very good basketball player so quick up and down the court. The one one pitch to him is swung on and popped up and second baseman center or right fielder excuse me are both going for it but the second baseman will get to it in time for out number three. So three up, three down, go the Knights, and we will move to the top of the fifth inning. When we come back, you're listening to Baseball on 106.5 FM, AM 1350 WCMP. This is a story we all share, of a place rooted in tradition and rich with opportunity, a people driven by compassion and vision. At Essentia Health, we're proud to play our role in this story because we know that this place, these people, are like nowhere else. Visit Essentia Health in Hinkley Sandstone or our new location in Moose Lake for all your care needs. Schedule an appointment at EssentiaHealth.org today. Getting set for the top of the fifth inning. Here in... Hinkley, Minnesota at Brennan Field. Knights lead 2 to nothing over the Bell Plain Tigers at the Hinkley Invitational Tournament. And if the Knights are able to hold on to this lead and win this game, they will play tomorrow night at 8 p.m. And they will play the winner of the game between Spring Hill and Bell Plain. The first game of tomorrow, of all five games tomorrow, will be Centennial taking on Lions Pub at 10 a.m. and of course Spring Hill taking on Maple Plain at 12.30. Leading off for the Bell Plain Tigers is Cade Morrison, the center fielder wearing number four. And he'll watch the pitch go by for ball one. one -oh count to Morrison. Here's the windup in the pitch, Schmidt. And that one is right out to center field to TJ Johnson. Again, he takes about three steps and makes that catch for out number one. Morrison now one for two on the night and now it's Lucas O'Brien. He struck out in his first at bat. Nobody on him, one down. Here's the windup in the pitch from Schmidt. Swung on and missed. Oh, 
A one count for O'Brien. Here's the 0 1 pitch from Schmidt. That one swung on and hit foul off the first baseline. Count moves to 0 and 2 for O'Brien. One down, nobody on for the Tigers. Schmidt, here's the windup and the pitch. And that one's going to get in the gap past the second baseman. And on for a base hit is O'Brien. Runner on with one out. And that brings up Zach Dulkey. He struck out in his first at bat as well. His team down two to nothing to the Knights. Looked like second baseman had to stretch, stretch something out there. Schmidt making sure everybody's set and ready. He'll get back onto the mound. Dalkey will get into the batter's box, and we're set for this at bat. One runner on and one out. Schmidt with the pitch. Swung on and hit to the third baseman, but it's going to bounce and hit his arm, and there's going to be no play. So in E5 for the Knights. As Dalkey reaches on an error. And now it's Josh Terrio back to the top of the order here for the Tigers. Two runners on, one in scoring position, and only one out. Terrio is two for two, or excuse me, one for one tonight. He reached base on a walk, and the first pitch to him is a strike. Again, painting that outside edge of the plate is Schmidt. Just so good with that pitch tonight. He's got great placement. Schmidt with the 0-1 pitch. And that one's right to Latexier, and that one's going to get by him. And that should score a run, and it will. And the Tigers will cut the lead in half as O'Brien will come around to score an RBI single for Terrio. So the Tigers are able to cut into the lead. Cut the lead exactly in half with two runners on, one in scoring position, and still only one out. We're going to get a mound visit here for Schmidt. Manager Ted Haas out there on the mound. Ted Haas, the head girls basketball coach for the Pine City Dragons. He's had really good teams these past two years. They have been back-to-back -back conference champs. And I, if I remember correctly, they finished this past season undefeated in Great River Conference play. They were in the state tournament two years ago and then Unfortunately, this past season, COVID kept them out of the playoffs. If I remember right, though, they might have been able to play one game, but that was it before COVID shut down their season. Mound visit over, over and Colton Kirkow at the plate. Two runners on, one out. First pitch to him is in there for strike one. Schmidt in a tough spot and got some work to do here to get his team out of here. Try and hold the damage to one run. Here's the windup in the pitch. That bounces to Johnson, but he does a good job of blocking it, keeping it in front of him to hold the runners where they're at. And the count will move to one and one for Kirkow. Schmidt with the pitch. That's in there for strike two. A strikeout would extremely be helpful. One, two count for Kirkow. Schmidt with the pitch. Swung on, and that one will hook foul. That one hooks foul off the first baseline. It actually bounces over the fence there by the party deck. And one of the fans over there will throw it right back in. Count remains one, two for Kirkow. Two on, one out. Schmidt gets the signal he likes. And we got a time call from the ump. 
And we'll get set to do it again. One, two count for Kirkow. Schmidt with the pitch. And that one is a slow roller to the shortstop. This is gonna be a tough play anywhere it goes. I think they got him at third, they did. Nice job there by the shortstop, Jacob Perotti. That's a tough one. That was a slow roller to him and hit the grass and just slowed way down. But he hustled to it and then made a beautiful throw onto third for out number two. So Kirkow will read on, reach on a fielder's choice. Swing and a miss here by Brady Curtis. All one the count for Brady Curtis. Here's the pitch from Schmidt. That one swung on and hit right to the center fielder, TJ Johnson. He takes one half step back and he grabs it for out number three. So two hits there for the Bell Plain Tigers. They get one run off that hit, off those hits, and they cut the lead in half of the Knights. It's a two to one lead now for the Knights as we head to the bottom of the fifth inning and the Knights will look to add on to their lead and add some insurance runs here as we move to the bottom of the fifth inning on WCMP. Daggett's Fresh Foods in Hinkley providing you with the highest quality food for your family. This week at Daggett's, get fresh blackberries or blueberries, two pints for $5. Assorted bone and pork chop family packs are $2.29 per pound. Boneless top sirloin steaks are $7.99 per pound. And five pound bags of best choice russet potatoes are two for $5. Deals are good this week only while supplies last. So hurry into your local grocery store, Daggett's Fresh Foods in Hinkley. Minnesota, it's home. Hot summers at the lake, beautiful falls, snowy winters, and rainy springs. We experience it all. Make sure you're ready to handle whatever this state throws at you with help from Minnesota Equipment in Isani. Minnesota Equipment carries brands you love, like John Deere, Steel, Toro, Gravely Zero Turn Mowers, and Aaron Snowblowers. Their helpful staff can not only get you the equipment you need, but can help you maintain it so it will last. Plus, they carry a full line of farm equipment. Minnesota Equipment in Isani, online at minnesotaequipment.com. Bottom of the fifth inning. Knights still have the lead. Two to one over the Tigers. Trying to hold on to that lead and add a couple more runs here in the bottom of the fifth to give them some insurance. And leading off the bottom of the fifth for the Knights will be number 31, Jacob Perotti who made a nice play to get the second out and the lead runner at third, prevent a bases loaded situation. First pitch to Perotti is outside for ball one. Terrio with the 1-0 pitch. That one's in there for strike one. On one the count. Prodi 0 for 1 so far tonight. Here's the 1-1 one -one pitch from Terrio, and he swings and hits that one foul out of play. Count moves to 1 and 2. 1 and 1, excuse me. Now it's 2 and 1. Getting a little ahead of myself. Two and one now for Perotti. No, it is two and two. Even count at two and two for Perotti. Here's the pitch. He swings and hits this one. Is it going to get down? It does. It is down for a leadoff base hit by Perotti. Leadoff batter's on for the Knights, and that'll bring up Cade Thurner. Cade Thurner went down looking in his first at bat. Terrio. He said the third baseman is on the grass looking for the bunt. Here's the windup 
And the pitch, that one, bunt is going to be popped up, but it's going to go out of play. So the bunt is popped up out of play by Thurner, and the count is 0-1. Those bunt pop-ups can be dangerous, as if they pop up and stay in play. Could be caught, but that one goes out of play. Third baseman gives the signal. Thurner steps back into the box. We're set to go with an 0-1 pitch. Terrio. Here is the pitch. Low for ball one. Catcher kind of faked a throw over to first, but Prody was not too far off the base, so he just walks back. 1-1 one, one count for Thurner. Terrio with the pitch. That one's going to be low for ball two. Two one count for Cade Thurner. 0 for 1 on the night. Terrio gets set. Here's the pitch. A little bit inside, and that's going to pop up. And it gets down. Somehow it gets down. So the pitcher and catcher go for it both, but it gets down right in front of them. It was a pop up, but it, it, it was a quick pop up that got down right in front of the catcher and pitcher. They weren't able to get to it. And Thurner, he didn't run to first thinking that the, the ball was going to be in the air and be caught easily by the pitcher or catcher. So unfortunately, that's going to be the first out. So Thurner did not run thinking that it would be caught as it popped up <laughs> just right in between, like halfway between the catcher and pitcher, and it gets down. So out number one, but the runner does advance to second, and that's going to be an awkward play there for... Perotti as he was on first. You got to be careful because if they catch it, you're going to be stuck, but he makes it to second safely. Now it's Trevor Johnson at the plate. He swings on the first pitch and he'll get a piece of it, follow it straight back into the backstop. Count is 0-1. Johnson 0 for 2-9. to He reached on Aaron his first at-bat and would eventually reach home. Checks his swing on pitch number two here. And he didn't go around, and that one is ball one. One and one now the count. Third base coach is the manager, Ted Haas, giving the signals. One one pitch to Johnson. That one swung on and popped. I don't think far enough for Perotti to tag. Oh, and he thought about it. But a fly out to the first baseman. And that'll be two outs, and Sean Osmus at the plate. He's one for two tonight. He could really use a base hit here. That would more than likely score Perotti as he's got some wheels. So just a base hit is all they need to add an extra run onto their lead. Terrio gets set. Here's the pitch. Osmus swings and misses. Four strike one. Two down, runner on in scoring position. Terrio waits the signal, gets one he likes. Oh, he just wipes some sweat off. Now he gets one that he likes. Ooh, that one pitch is in there for Strike two, just getting that inside part of the plate. Osmus now with an 0-2 count. Again, a base hit will more than likely send Perotti home. Two down, 0-2 count for Osmus. Here's the pitch. Osmus swings and misses for out number three. Terrio now has three strikeouts on the evening, and the Knights... Get one hit, and no score, on, no run off that base hit. And it is still a two to one lead for the Hinkley Knights as we move to the top of the sixth inning at this Hinkley Invitational Tournament. That stretches across three days. The Knights part of the first couple of games tonight. Again, the first game 
completed there was the Elko Express taking on the Buffalo Bulldogs. Elko got the victory 10 to 1 over the Bulldogs. So Elko moves on in the winner's bracket. They'll play tomorrow at 5.30, and Buffalo will be in the elimination bracket. They'll play at 3 p.m. tomorrow. Elko will play the winner of Centennial and Lions Pub, the first game of tomorrow's action. And, of course, Buffalo will play the loser of that game. Hankley and Bell playing. After they finish, the winner of this game will move on and play tomorrow evening at 8 p.m. They'll be in the prime time slot again. The winner of this game will await the winner of the game between Spring Hill and Maple Plain. That'll be the second game of tomorrow's action. And then, of course, the loser of Bell Plain and Hinkley will uh, play on Sunday at 10.30. So, want to be in that prime time slot. Get some of the home crowd with you on Saturday evening. Schmidt finished warming up, and we'll get set to go. And the leadoff batter for the Bell Plain Tigers will be number three, John Schmidt. Top of the sixth inning, Tigers dug into the lead and cut it in half in the last inning. John Schmidt so far tonight, 0 for 2. As he watches the first pitch go by, a little bit outside for ball one. Schmidt with the windup in the pitch. That one's going to be outside as well for ball two. Four hits by both teams. One error each. And it's a two-to-one lead for the Knights. This one is swung on and hit out to center field. It is high in the air, and T.J. Johnson gets to it in time for out number one. So one down for the Tigers, and that brings up Ben Groff. Groff also 0 for 2 on the night. He lined out to the shortstop in his first at bat, then flew out to TJ Johnson. There have been a, <laughs> quite a few times tonight where there's been a fly out to TJ out there in center field, and he hasn't had to take but maybe a step or even a half step. That one, though, probably the furthest he's traveled all night to grab a ball. Catcher and pitcher meet real quick, and we'll get set for Groff's turn at the plate. Schmidt with the windup in the pitch. Swing and a miss by Groff. It's 0-1-1. One, one. Schmidt with the windup in the pitch. The 0-2 pitch is 0-1 pitch, rather. Swung on and hit towards left field, and the shortstop gets to it. What a play there by Perotti. To make that catch, traveling backwards, not an easy play for a shortstop. Going over the shoulder and traveling backwards to make the catch, but a nice catch there by Perotti to grab out number two. And now it's Garrett Boblet's turn at the plate. He's 0 for 2 tonight. He flew out to first base in his first at-bat, then struck out in his second at-bat. And the Knights would definitely appreciate a 1-2-3 inning here. Here's the windup and the pitch from Schmidt. This one is swung on and hit out of play towards the stands, but it gets over them. So they're all safe. Boblet back in the box. Schmidt gets set, gets the signal he lights. Here's the windup in the pitch. Just outside for ball one. Trying to place it in that outside spot of the plate where he can just paint the edge, and the 1-1 pitch from Schmidt is outside again. And trying to get that outside edge of the plate where he has done so well tonight. He's got three strikeouts on the night so far. This one is hit and towards the party box, but goes in between the stands and the party box for a foul ball. That'll make the count two and two for Boblet. Here's the windup in the pitch from Schmidt. Swung on and missed. That'll be out number three. So Schmidt will grab his fourth strikeout of the evening. And we'll move to the bottom of the six. And the Knights will look to add some insurance runs here as we're getting close to the end of this one. Again, seven innings for all the games here in this Hankley Invitational Tournament this weekend. 
The Knights lead 2-1 to one over the Tigers as we move to the bottom of the sixth. You're listening to baseball on 106.5 FM, AM 1350, and streaming live at WCMPRadio.com. Are you interested in a technical degree that can quickly help you land your dream career? Or maybe you've always dreamed of going to a four-year college, but you'd like to start close to home. Either way, Pine Technical and Community College has you covered. PTCC offers more than 50 degrees in hot fields like healthcare information technology, advanced manufacturing, and business. PTCC is now accepting applications. Financial aid may be available. Online at pine.edu. Starting out or starting over, find your future at Pine Technical and Community College. Hankley, the site for this game at beautiful Brendan Field. I want to thank everyone for tuning in. It's a great night for baseball. About 9.45 p.m. on Friday evening, sitting at about 70 degrees. Just a great night. No breeze out there, maybe just a tad bit of one. But not too hot, not too humid. Again, it's a pretty clear night. Got some clouds in the distance, but they're pretty sporadic, so not anything real in a cluster. Just a great night for baseball. Again, if you are going through town, passing by the Hinkley exit, going through Hinkley, make sure to stop on by this weekend. Might be a little late for tonight's game, but you can catch it right here on WCMP, of course. But if you're going to go by Hankley this weekend or going through Hankley this weekend, be sure to stop on by Brennan Field. So be sure to stop on by because we've got some good action, some baseball action, some tournament action from teams around the state of Minnesota. And, of course, your host, the Hankley Knights. T.J. Johnson will lead off for the Knights. He'll watch this one go by for strike one. one count. Terrio gets set. Here's the windup in the pitch. Johnson with a big swing and a miss there. He's looking for the fences on that one. No two count now for TJ Johnson. Terrio, he gets set. Here's the windup and the pitch. Johnson does get this one. Bounces to the third baseman. He gets his glove on it and throw on the first in time for out number one. Johnson nearly beat out that throw, but the throw just beat him by about a step. And now at the plate will be Corey Schmidt. Corey Schmidt over two tonight. He did have that sack fly there in the first inning. Then a fly out in the third. He's first pitch swinging, but that one will be foul down the third base line. 0-1 the count. Bottom of the sixth inning, the Knights, they hold a slim 2-1 to one lead over the Belle Plaine Tigers in their first round game in this Hankley Invitational Tournament. He'll swing on this one and pop. Got a runner on. Oh, an infield fly rule pitcher for the runners to run one. Oh, one is going to be in there for strike two. And we will move to, to the top of the seven inning. Pants in the bottom of the seventh inning. As they are the whole seven innings for this invitational tournament here. Trying to make sure we get all the games. We'll take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. You're listening to Baseball on WCMP. Been injured in an auto accident or have sustained other personal injury? You don't have to leave town to get good representation. Spear and Swanson attorneys at Law and Pines case with no fee until they get you money. They also handle divorce and custody cases. Criminal defense including Spear and Swanson is your local law for legal representation or advice. Call 586. Spear and Swanson. Cade Morrison will lead off here in the tightest nice job would be the go-ahead run. First pitch. 